cover uh, starting at Spingy probably. So with um, with Wahoo and the Elephant Suit, um, there's the way you could do it is um, you can you can troll obviously. Is trolling obviously the most popular method? Um, but guys do jig, um, but you have the problem of getting bitten off on your jigs. But a lot of people use stick baits and poppers, so um, that's where I'll probably um, emphasise a lot today. Um, and has anyone here like cast stick baits or poppers yet at all? No one, really? A couple maybe. And anyone want to do that to catch a wahoo or yellowfin? It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a... Um, like one of those bucket list things, you know? Catch a big wahoo on a stick bait or a popper or, or a yellowfin tuna. Um, the thing that we have, the lucky thing we have if you're out fishing at the moment, especially out a bit wider, it happens in close too, is if you come across anything that's floating, whether it be a log or a dead cow, whatever it might be, there will be lots of um, wahoo and yellowfin tuna and dolphinfish, obviously, in the vicinity. And that's when you use stick baits and poppers and have a fat time, okay? So if you have the luxury of having a combo just sitting in the boat, rigged up, ready to throw a stick bait or popper, no matter if that situation arises, or if you just want to have a crack anyhow down the Nine Mile Reef, there's a real good spot to do it. Uh, I've done a lot of popper and stick bait fishing down the Nine Mile Reef. It's, it's fantastic. And you get a lot of big wahoo, a lot of yellowfin, um, everything, sharks, unfortunately, but uh, mac tuna, unfortunately. But you get a lot of good fish. So um, that's a great spot if you fish down on Tweedway. Which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, just want to grab that stick bait rod there. So we'll start on stick baits first, fishing for them. So this is like a stick bait combo. Um, so it's quite heavy. It's a P4 to 8. This is like a base model, but would do the job 100% guaranteed. Um, that's a Pen Battler, a Battle, sorry, 8000 DX, which is a souped up model. Um, great combo. Something like that spooled up with. Um, with a sort of braid around 65, 80 pounds is around about just a bit over 400 bucks to you guys. So it's pretty cheap to get into. Um, obviously you could take that reel off and use it on a short rod for trolling and jigging and everything else. But that's the sort of rod that you need something in that category. Quite big, but in the boat you can pull it apart and sew it. Nice and pull apart there. So that's the height. It's only fairly short like your boat rod, you know. So there you can store. Um, but in saying that, um, obviously, as I said, the reel can move around things through. In stick baits and poppers, so if I was going to go out the day and do that sort of category, um, you do need a few lures in that sort of style. Um, they're not really, well, I have trawled stick baits and caught fish on them. I've never trawled a popper because I don't think it would work that well. Uh, but stick baits definitely work. I'll pass some of that around. Let's do it too. And that. And a big one. And small one. So you can have rods that are like, um, some of you might have snapper rods that are seven foot long with about a five or six thousand size reel. And um, say 30 to 50 pound braid. Does anyone have that sort of stuff? You probably mostly would have, I dare think. Um, so that would also do the job. You might get spooled, but it'd be a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, worth it. That's right. So. Um, I'd, even if you just got a couple of smaller stick baits coming around um, and have them rigged on that rod. So if you're going to go out trawling for the day, you're obviously not going to use that rod for float lining. So I'd rig it up with a stick bait or a popper on it, ready to go. Just in that situation, if you do see something floating in the water or if you see birds diving, you get a little um, yellowfin tuna or school up with the birds and they'll be in amongst the spotties, they'll be in amongst the mac tuna and, and, and the little bonito. So um, ready to roll with a smaller stick bait. So it's a starting point to get you into that sort of fishing. And that's where most people start, the, short, the little end. And when you get bigger, you go to the big boy stuff. Or not bigger, <laughs> when you get into bigger fish, sorry. <laughs> um, and obviously stick baits can get quite huge. And that, there's other things that type of things. So we sell a lot of this type of stuff here. So you can also use that same outfit up in the reef, catch some coral trout and stuff like that as well. Um, just a slightly different style. Is there any questions on that so far at all, folks, on that side? Okay, um, poppers, if you want to cast poppers, so a stick bait, um, they're a lot easier on you, the person. So if you're casting a big heavy rod like that, um, it is quite tiring, and you will get blisters on your hands, be like jigging, you don't think you're going to get blisters, but you will. 
um, and uh, a stick bait lure is a lot easier to, to rip and pull through the water, it sort of glides like this through the water. And um, it's, it's not so demanding physically, um, but when you start throwing big poppers like this type of thing here, or that type of thing there, um, there's a big, big front on them. And when you have to bloop them, you actually got to pull it quite hard through the water. And, and it's like five or 10 times more hard to work. Um, so I think that's why probably 80% of our customers buy stick baits over yeah. poppers. <laughs> but, um, but poppers are very, very cool to watch. They bloop the water, you sort of rake it and they bloop and rake it and they bloop and then you see a big mouth come up and crash it. Or, or a mackerel dive on it. Well, it's spelled a ma uh, Spanish mackerel love them too, you know. Uh, but we're talking about hoots tonight and yellowfin. But yeah, so that's um, another category you can look at as well. So, any questions on the stick baking, baking side of it at all, folks? Okay, now we're getting to where Evan. What's the right, You know your number all good? Nine, apparently. Nine. Nine. Right here. Hooks, sorry, hook, so, hooks, yeah, hook's good call, Robbie. Um, so, a lot of the lures, most of the lures these days come with fairly good hardware, pretty good hooks and pretty good rings as well. Came back about 10 years ago, it was crap, but now it's pretty good. Um, but uh, I like BKK hooks. We've got owners. We've got big, owners are very good too. We've got all different brands downstairs. If you want to upgrade anything, we've got some old lures that the hooks are just like standard VMCs or something like that. Um, change them 100%. Trebles or singles? Um, I'm a trebles guy. I hate singles. Um, <laughs> I actually had a lot of bad luck on them overseas. Uh, I, I do much much better on trebles. Um, they're hard to get out and the, and they're more dangerous on the person too because. Throwing stick baits and poppers around is quite dangerous. Quite often you'll have a big fish on and it can be just in the water like that and it'll pull and pull, come shooting back at you. A lot of people get impaled. Um, and anything, they're just, uh, it's, one hook's a lot less uh, physical than three hooks, of course. Uh, but I'll pass these around, you can see how strong they are. And when you're using rings, just a little pointer is try and get um, a tempered type ring, which is like a flat sided type ring rather than the old standard round type stainless steel wire, the flat side is a lot stronger. Okay, they're not necessarily dearer, but something like that size is only small as um, around 200 pounds, around just under 90 kilos in, in, uh, in dead lift, lift strength, which is pretty good. So yeah, Rob, um, I'd, I'd be going trebles over singles. But if you want to go singles, we do have lots of singles here. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other questions on the stick baits and poppers? Okay, we'll get into, um, into trawling now. So um, if you're gonna chase, how many people wanna want chase wahoo, like wahoo, wahoo? Yeah. So how many people have caught a wahoo this season? Oh, and you have maybe? And a good size, mate? Oh, the first one I've ever got is probably 13, 1400. Oh, good, okay, that's a good size, yeah. And um, out the front here? Yeah, yeah. pretty wide. Last weekend? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's actually a lot like caught last weekend. There wasn't many fish caught last weekend out wide, but there's a lot of wahoo caught, and they're pretty good out around the fads, fad 12 B and C, they're in that area. Um, they're also on the back side of the 24 fathom reef in, in about 46, 48 meters, um, and obviously the nine mile that area is the, the, the gun place to go, which we'll talk about as I said a little bit later. Um, but okay, so trawling. Um, you have a couple of different options. So if you're going to trawl standard type like TLD, probably most of you get that sort of combo, TLD 20 or 25, um, my suggestion would be to, on Wahoo and uh, bigger yellow for that wider, but definitely Wahoo, um, you need to be running around about sort of like 50 pound braid, it's not going to really do the job properly when you're trawling at high speed. The impacts is too physical, it'll snap it pretty easy, right? Um, 65 will just cut the grade, um, 80 would be better, and, um, and, but mono would be probably even a bit better again. It's one of the only things I like mono trolling is for Wahoo, uh, 50 pounds to go. Okay. Um, but if you want to troll uh, braid, you make sure you get at least a 6 metre or a 1 on litre, which you've got in your bag, I think, of at least 100 pounds. Because when you're doing sort of 12 knots, you're going a lot faster than normal. So when you're doing 12 knots and... Um, that uh, you get that strike. Firstly, your drag's really cranked up because if you're trolling a bib lure, um, it's quite demanding and quite hard on the rod and it's really working hard, it's so deep. 
And you've got to get lures that can run at 12 knots for the start, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but you need to have um, at that 12 knots and that lure's working so hard and your drag's so tight, when something hits it um, at that speed, it, it, if it's only 50 pound braid, it'll just snap. Okay, and if it's a uh, 30 pound mono, it'll probably snap as well. You've got to be using 50 pound mono or, or 65 to 80 pound braid. So if you're gonna, at the end of the season when the spanish are sort of slowing down and although sometimes they go right, right through, but um, uh, but the wahoo's normally kick in later, um, but we bought this, we don't normally do this till next month, but they're here now already. So hence why we're doing this seminar tonight. Um, I normally would put top shot my line a bit heavier from the normal mackerel type stuff, you know, because it just doesn't quite cut the grade. But that would do the job um, okay. But I will tell you now, a TLD 25, the total drag on that's only about eight or 10 kilos. Um, so when you've got 50 pound line on that and you're running, say, a, a, a fairly big um, lure in a, with a bib on it, in this sort of thing here, which I'll pass around, um, which these will run at 12 knots. Um, th this is probably going to be bent. If you can hold that, Stewie. Um, just with the lure on it, and pull up, pull up a little bit, mate. The lure on it's going to be about that sort of uh, bend. And when it gets hit, um, it's quite an impact because that's speed. But the drag on there is going to be nearly at, you're going to be actually trolling it like as much as you get that drag cranked up nearly on the pre strike. You're going to be cranking it up probably between half and full to stop the lure from pulling line off the, off the reel at 12 knots with a lure like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you get a lot of, a lot of force and deep divers. Um, you can get other lures that are, thanks, Drew, like this type of thing here. These are ones brought out from Rapala. Um, they're called Maven Extreme. They have a lot smaller bibs, so they don't get down as deep, and they definitely um, hang in. I think they say up to about uh, 20 knots. I don't know if it'll troll at 20 knots, but it definitely troll <laughs> it. <laughs> it'll definitely troll at 12 to 14. Um, but something like that would be the only way you get away with using 30 pound line, because you haven't got the drag cranked up as much, so the lure doesn't pull the drag off, and allows you then to be not hit as hard um, to break your line. Um, on the impact strike. So it's all relative to the lure as to the size of the line you're using. That's what I'm trying to get at here. So if you're using a real deep diving lure and it can handle 12 knots, you need to have 50 pound mono, as I said, or 80 pound braid. Um, something like that, you could probably get away with 30 pound mono or 50, maybe 50, 65 pound braid. Uh, but that would be the minimum. Yep. Then there's one other type of lure which you can use. Um, that would definitely be a right for 30 pound or 50 pound braid, 30 pound mono, 50 pound braid, and that's a bibless type lure like that. So bibless is the third type of lure you can troll. So you get deep divers that will hang in there, there's only certain brands that'll do it, and those brands, we'll get back to those first. Um, the stratas do hang in about 10 to 12 knots. The pacemaker from, um, from Samaki that's going around at the moment, um, they definitely hang in at 12 knots. Um, this one here, which is Atomics Hards, um, it's called Dragster for a reason, because <laughs> um, they do hang in there at 12 to 18 knots. That fellow there, okay. Um, but if you were to put out like a Rapala x rap 30, it will blow out of the water. If you put out a Helco, just a deep diving Helco, um, a crazy deep, at about eight to 10 knots, they blow out of the water. They don't hang in there, but you need to be doing like 10 to 12 knots. So there's only certain lures that'll do that category. Um, so that's your bib style. And then we got a few that have got the smaller bib on it, like the one going before, the other Rapala going around, the extreme. And then the third type of lure is um, a bibosaur like this. So a bibosaur has barely any weight on your, on your uh, line, on your rod. So it allows you to fish lighter lines. And they'll take a little lure like that at high speed, especially ele elephant, okay? Um, and these guys get bigger and bigger and bigger okay, to that sort of size. We'll pass these around. Um, and then you've got uh, the Max, which is like that size there. Obviously, something like that, you couldn't run it on 30 pound, but you could definitely run that on 50, of course. Um, these, again, um, we'll be looking at around about, um, let's say, 20 knots in good conditions, but um, definitely 12 knots. You don't need to troll 20 knots unless um, it's a bit rough and you're sitting on, say, 16 knots and you're going from A to B and you're going to go fight your way out into the 
shitty weather out to say 36 fathoms, it's definitely this time of year worth having a couple of lures out the back. Okay, of that variety if you can't do the bib type. At 16 knots, you really probably wouldn't be running a bib type. Okay, uh, but you definitely run those, or you run a skirt, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, any questions so far on those at all, folks? Uh, you all clued up on it? Yep, okay. Um, that's the old st style um, before the Max Rep come out from Helco. They used to do this fella here, uh, which is a trembler, and they also hang in quite well. They don't hang in as good as the Max, but they hang in pretty good. They go up to uh, 12 knots. Yeah, so they're fine as well. I'll set around as well. A bit more of a wobble action. The top of those, they get a bit wobbly and they blow out as well if you go too fast. Um, okay, so getting back to the rods and reels. So we've looked at TLD25. As I said, that'll do the job all right. Um, it'll definitely do the job on everything, but your board lining on those real big deep divers. Um, if you have the luxury of having a 50 wide of any type, um, this is like the bit more flasher versions, my old um, Tiago combo, but that's what my favourite sort of um, like big wahoo trawling type outfit or big yellow fin out wide. Um, the some of that's up there in price, probably around that around that twelve hundred dollar mark, a bit more. Um, but you can get something like this pen here that'll definitely do the job all right. So that's a twenty four kilo combo, um, holds about eight hundred meters of twenty four kilo. It is two speed as well. And it's a pen squall fifty. Um, low gear, high gear, and um, something like that we can do for around about um, <laughs> I'm not sure I remember what it was. <laughs> um, where's Lockie? I wouldn't believe my hands bumped off. <laughs> I think I think folks it was around about um, it's a bargain, I know that. <laughs> I think it was I think it was eight twenty and it came back. Yeah, I know, I don't know. I'm being careful, Brody. <laughs> um, my memory was <laughs> I think it was around about um, around six twenty nine or something like that. Oh no, it's all six five five ninety nine. Somewhere around there. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> it was just down to six hundred bucks, I think. But it's about eight hundred and thirty eight seventy or something as is as you see there. Um, but that's going to do the job of what you're going to be doing, definitely. Um, and you can use spin reels. So if you've got something like that type of thing there, like just a heavy jig outfit with a bit more braid on it preferably, um, that would definitely do the job right as well. We've got something like a 20,000 or 18,000 Saragossa or Stella or whatever you might have and, and a heavy jig rod, um, preferably with a gimbal on the bottom. Um, it's perfect for trawling for that what you're doing. Got plenty of drag, probably more drag than maybe as much as that 50, 50 uh, pen there, not as much as the Tiagra, but definitely more than um, the TLDs and stuff like that. So that would categorise as well. Um, so getting back to the hard bodies, any questions on the hard bodies at all? I can tell you how to do it all in a minute, okay? Just showing the gear now. Um, then the next category we can do is we troll skirts, and this is again for yellowfin and uh, wahoo, but you got to remember you're trawling fast. So a lot of your little marlin lures just don't cut the grade at 12 knots. They'll, they'll catapult and blow out the water and uh, and they, they sort of come in and out and then they'll just bury and then they'll just catapult out and doesn't quite work and you get tangled up. Um, so we go to more a heavier head or a bullet type head or a jet head. That's the three categories we use. Um, in size, we could use anything from that little size there um, which you can draw that easy 12 to 14 knots. Um, it's heavy and it's pointed and it doesn't get much air or water. Uh, that's where I'd start at. And then we sort of jump up to about that size there. Again, same shape. It's got a lead head. It's quite heavy. Um, then you go into your, like your bullet type heads like that fellow there. So that one there's got um, the metal head quite heavy and it's a jet head. So. It's only a little head, so it doesn't make much air, but a jet head does. So a jet head gets air into it, and when it blows at the back, it makes the lure look quite big. And that's the idea of a jet head. Um, if you were using a cup or a slant face, not cup face, cup face won't work at that speed, but
but a slant face sort of will. I'll swim, they might pop out and then I'll swim again. They'll shake like crazy, but it needs to be a heavy one. It can't be a light one. That's a heavy one. Okay. And then we jump up the scale to the bigger boys, something like that fellow there. Again, it's a, it's a heavy head and it's a pointy head and I'll definitely trawl fast. Texture. I think they've got that their bag, actually, that one, right? Um, then you go up to something like that. It's another slant head, just a bigger version of the one that we showed you earlier. Um, but it's very, very heavy, okay? So something like that fellow there um, would be probably the size you'd want to use if you're chasing Wahoo in that 20 kilo size. And you want to be trawling that probably on 50 pound. Um, we have a lot of customers coming in from Vanuatu and New Caledonia every day, we get them actually. And, um, and they, their like, favourite target species is Wahoo. And they get monsters like 30, 40 kilos all the time. And our biggest selling lures are, are that size, which are fairly substantial. Um, they are trolling those on 50 and 37 kilo line. Um, and that's the sort of thing that, um, if you want to get right into it and trawl really fast, they'll trawl it sort of, that pointy one will trawl at about 18 to 20 knots. Um, they'll work really well, so we're going to give a good crack. They also do a jet head version, which is that fellow there as well. Um, that's the big one. It's very, very heavy. I think they're, I don't know, 100 and something grams. <laughs> Quite heavy. Um, and I think you guys have got the little brother to them, which is that fellow in there. I think you guys have got that in your bag um, rigged up. So that's how you need to rig up the other lures that are in there. You need to rig them up on wire. So you, do not trawl, uh, like intentionally, unintentionally, with wahoo catch, um, bycatch, as you're trawling for marlin, you'll get probably four out of five wahoo on your lures because, your um, skirt lures, because you're using wire in the hooks, right? But if you were to run that hook straight with, to a mono and crimp it in the skirt, you'll end up losing everything, every time. Um, you will get the old one, it'll still get bitten off because they've got such a long snout. Um, so we, su yeah, so we suggest to run um, about that much wire in front, only about 50 centimetres or 60 centimetres, not too long. Uh, fairly strong, this is 285 pounds that's on your rigs that you got in your bag. It has to be around that 49 strand, 250 pound minimum, or they'll bite it off. They're very sharp teeth. Okay? Uh, and they've got a long snout. And Wahoo, um, hard to explain, they're one of the only fish that have a articulated front beak, they look like a beak actually. So they see the snip, the, the front of their mouth actually hinges. Have you ever seen it? D different to normal mackerel and stuff like that, a fixed head. These guys can actually hinge the end and they just snip. And that's why they bite off anything and everything. <laughs> and quite often you trawl that along and you get two fish on it and then that, or one fish and there's only that much skirt left, you know? Which I've done, and I've trawled just that skirt and still smacked them after we got a few, you know. Yeah, so um, that's just skirt side of things. So, okay, so any questions on skirts before I tell you how to do it all? No? So you got it all? Okay, this is for the Wahoo, okay? So um, we've got our gear all set up. Oh, just a couple of things too. Um, the leader. Okay, your leader, as I said, get a lot of shock, a lot of speed. So it needs to be around 80 pound minimum if you're trawling those... Um, Smaller skirts, or you're trawling uh, those shallower, big, fast type lures. Um, and if you're trawling the deeper divers or the bigger skirts, it needs to be around about 100 pounds minimum, okay? Or 120 even. Um, if you tie your own leaders, yeah, 120 is fine. That sort of size, fairly heavy. But that's how people get big fish. They fish heavy. They fish. They fish rig ready for it. A lot of guys, like most guys, go under gunned. And when they get that big fish on, they never get to see it. They get to feel it. That's about it. It's all, all over. And that happens to all of us, unfortunately. <laughs> Undergunned. Um, so there's a lot of big fish out there, but if you want to get it, you've got to fish big and heavy. So one of my mates, Glenn, he's... I call him Magnet because everything he catches is big, but because he rigs big. He fishes everything heavy, and he just purposely goes out to catch the biggest Spanish or the biggest Wahoo or the biggest snap, or whatever it might be. And he's always overgunned, but when he gets it, he gets it. Okay. How's that catching, not fishing? Well, it's ca well, still fishing, still <laughs> hard work, <laughs> but perhaps yeah, a bit more, a bit more that way. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, some guys will ask, do we use wire traces on our lures? Um, as in that type of trace. If, there, if you are going to use one, the only brand I'd probably use is that or, or Helco. Um, it needs to be around about 150 pounds and needs to be, as I said, 50 centimetres long. The reason being is that, um, as I said before, it has to be able to take that shock. And there's no stretch in wire. So you the first thing going to pop is going to be this crimps or something like that if it's a dud quality one. Okay, so make sure the quality is reasonable. Uh, snap swivel, same deal. I think you've got some of these in your bag. Um, size 5 or size 6 is what I'd recommend in the size, and they're sort of around that 60 to 80 kilo size, I think, by memory. Um, but that's what size I use. Um, and they'll withstand that, that impact. Uh, that's about all I need to tell you on that. Okay, when you hook one of these fish up, you need to have if you fish and poppers and stick baits, you need to have some sort of belt. Uh, this is a Shimano popper belt type thing, um, which clips around you. You need something to take, because it's quite heavy, and I'm going to get a long rod, it really gives you a hard time. So it needs to be um, something that's substantial. Um, that's the dive version of the popper rod, a uh, popper belt. They have like a little kidney harness thing at the back here too. And um, just, they work the job, and they've got little plier holders and clips on them and stuff like that. If you are fishing with a, um, like a boat type rod, and uh, your belt needs to be at least, um, at least something in that category, which I'll pass around. If not bigger, or black magic, or whatever it might be. It's something that'll sort of take um, a bit of the pain off you. Um, if you want something that you can just pass around that's really quick, um, these are a great thing. You just have it clipped on wherever on the boat or on to your belt or wherever, and your rod just goes straight in there and it goes straight here. It's very quick. It's a little bit like we do the um, um, cushions downstairs. Is there any there? Yeah, I think there is. There is yeah, yeah. I've got some down there. The cushions are very popular as well. That's just a bit sub more, better quality. I'll pass that around too. Thank you. Um, so that's the tools. Oh, a couple more tools. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to go and do it in a minute. Um, make sure a good pair of pliers. You guys have big bad teeth. You need something to get that, those hooks out and something substantial. Don't just use a little pair of pliers. Too dangerous. Um, donger, I didn't bring a donger up. We normally have one hanging here, but we haven't. <laughs> but uh, a donger is very important as well. Um, yes. <laughs> the, the thing is um, with the wahoo, yellowfin not too bad with wahoo, um, the problem is that, um, that those teeth, they're very, very dangerous. They'll touch you and they'll just slice it open. Um, when you're using a fillet knife, make sure it's got some length in the blade. Okay, to fill it. Uh, wahoo are very good to eat, they're fantastic. Okay. So we're talking wahoo here. Um, any questions on the gear at all, guys? All ready to go? Okay, good. Okay, so we set our drags right. We've got our rods. Um, we're going to go fishing. So I've just drawn a diagram here, the Nine Mile Reef. So roughly the Nine Mile Reef. Um, so this is south, that's north, that's west. There's obviously east over here. Just so people know on the television here. No, but why would you put north on the bottom of the map? Oh, because we're looking at it that way. That's south, that's uphill, that's downhill. <laughs> <laughs> because it's easier for me to... Otherwise, I've got to reverse it. i got to reverse it otherwise. <laughs> otherwise, I'll put the land over this side. <laughs> this is how I'm going to do it. So, when you, when you fish in the Nine Mile Reef, um, and generally the current's hitting on this end here, right? So on the south side. It's easy if I do it this way, because that's the way the current's going. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so when the current hits the reef, that's what we call the pressure point. And that's always where a lot of fish are is in this area right here. Okay. So anyone here fish the Nine Mile? How many people have fished the Nine Mile Reef? How many people have caught a wire hook at the Nine Mile Reef? A few of you have? Yeah, good. Okay, so um, a couple of my favourite areas to fish it are this area right here, and this corner here, but definitely this edge here. And the reason being is that's your pressure point and that's quite a lot like a wide area. So you can actually go around about, I don't know, probably six to 800 metres running east-west on the top here. Um, and then the bottom corner, um, you've only got a very small area, but that's where it stands up. It's the shallowest area of the reef, um, but it's also a very good area for catching a lot of fish. Um, but my favourite area is that area there and then trawling along here 
in that 80 foot mark or sort of 24 meters depth along this edge here. Okay, and from there to here is running about 2Ks. So, or, or, yeah, about 2Ks nearly. So 2Ks, nearly 1K. Then the bottom here is only about three or 400 meters. Um, and the waves will break here if it's pretty, pretty big swell. If you want to cast stick baits and poppers, start at the top end here and just drift all the way down the current heading south and, uh, and work that whole area there, casting that, that ripply effect in the pressure point. Okay. You don't get much over here. Well, I haven't. I Does not ever get exposed? Um, it's never, no, I think it's about eight metres deep on the deep yeah. shallowest end. Uh, it does, if, I, I'll take that back actually, if it was about a, an eight metre swell or six metre swell, it would become exposed, yeah. Only in the one spot. Only in the one spot, yeah, that's that, great. That, 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 that corner. Yeah, that's the only spot. Yeah. yeah. So, so, if you're drifting to the south, yep. chain yep. stick bags and chain poppers, yep. are you casting back to the north? I like casting to the west. Uh, casting slightly, yeah, good call. I'm casting north slightly, but west more. Does that make sense? So, uh, probably in, yeah, correct. Probably uh, in that direction. Actually, I've cast. Yeah, I, I, I just like to cast west, uh, but I'm casting sort of in that in that area. Not not that way. Not straight up into it. It's a bit like when you even when you're catching whiting and using little stick baits, you cast across the current, always. Yeah, um, but you can start right up the top here. Uh, so the, this area here, guys, is around about sort of 12 metres, 15 metres deep. Um, and then it drops off to around about, on this end down here, around about 40 metres, and this end here about 28, I think, on the, across the top here. Um, you'll, you'll, see the, you'll see the pressure point. Um, get up a little bit from it and have your first cast probably down on that angle there, mate. Slot down until you get to it, and then cast back up a little bit from there. Um, you know, it's, it's quite wide, so if you can cast 100 metres, you, you could probably do your first run down the here from up here, then your second run, third run, fourth run. You could probably do four or five different 100 metre runs, does that make sense? And work the whole thing, rake it. Yeah, that's anything. Yep. Sit on the outside and cast. Yeah, that's, this is my favourite area. Yeah, 100%. Well, I do like up at the top here as well. I've got a lot of yellowfin up here actually casting. Um, but for Wahoo, that, that side there is to go, generally speaking. Yeah. What about liveys? Can you drop liveys there as well? Ah, uh, you can. You can drift liveys down this edge here. It's really good too. Yeah. But um, I'd be trawling uh, this, these things. I'd smack it. Yeah. So when you're trawling skirts, this is the next thing. Um, you need, if this is your boat here, oh, sorry. This is your boat sort of thing. Um, with these rods here, I'd have that first one at quite a fair way back, like 60 metres. And this guy here, about 80 metres. And if you've got rods on a bit of an angle, about 100, a long way back, and maybe even 120 on that one. Just make sure no idiot runs over them. But, um, you have to have them a long way back to hang in there, otherwise they just don't hang in. If you're trawling the, the, dip, uh, the bib type lures, they'll probably drop about a third of the length back, so that'll become 40, 60, 80 and 100, okay? Because they'll dive down obviously, or even a bit more. But if you're trawling uh, skirts, they'll obviously stay in that depth. Um, but yeah, we drop them a long way back. If you have them too short, they'll catapult at that speed. Even oh, some of the heavier ones won't, but um, some of those resin ones that went around will they'll catapult. So you've got to get it down low. And as I said, there's a lot of pressure at that speed. Your rods really start to bend. Okay, so we're doing around about um, 21 to 24 kilometres per hour on the GPS, and around about uh, 10 at the lowest. But I like to send about 12, 12 knots. Maybe even 13 knots. <coughs> okay. 18 is too fast. It's not too fast for Wahoo, but down there it is. Because you'll cover the ground too quick. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be very quick. Um, on the nine mile reef. But yeah, if you're going, if you, say you went out from uh, the seaway 
and I was going to go down to the Nine Mile Reef at this time of the year. Um, and it's a bit shitty, a bit, bit of subtly blown, maybe 15, 18 knots, and you can only do 15 or 18 knots. 100% put out two lures. Yeah, like you're just crazy not to do it. And any time from November to even May, um, and it's when you're travelling, oh, last weekend you couldn't do it because you can do 30 knots. But when you can't do 30 knots, when you can't do 20 knots, definitely this time, that five or six month period, you've got to have lures out, guys. Yeah. Yeah, because there's just too many wahoo. They're just out in the paddock. They're just roaming around. Um, they will follow current lines and stuff like that, and they will follow obviously, um, like the the brown patches of the whatever you want to call it algae or I call it um, oh. coral spawn, but whatever you want to call it. Um, they'll be in that area as well, um, and wherever there's bait as well. But they'll be in from um, just outside 30 meters. They could be in close as well. Um, the biggest way I've ever caught in the Gold Coast, but we lost it at the boat. <laughs> what, um, <yeah. laughs> was up at um, the pin, we're only in like 15 metres of water. And it was like well, well over 40 kilos, like seven foot monster. Um, so, and we're trolling hard bodies actually. But they're, they're around now, the now's the time. Um, so if I'm trawling out at the, say the fad area, um, you may just need to bring them in a little bit because you have a bit more boat traffic. The nine mile is the same too, though, I must admit. You just, yeah, just uh, you can't speed up much more to outrun a guy coming at you because you're already doing 12 or 14 knots. So you don't want to be doing 20 knots because it's just become a big tangle, a big stuff up. So um, if you've got a boat that's coming across your backside, you're probably better off stopping and letting go across the front of you, you know? Does that make sense? Um, because you just can't go any faster. So it's, I'd rather him go across the front and the line sink down rather than get a big tangled mess up. Um, any questions about that at all? Oh, I'm good. Okay, I'll just rub that off for a sec. The most important part is whichever way you go is to set your drag. Really important. So that speed, if you just set a bit too tight, it'll just snap your line. It's very, very quick. And when you, you need to also be, like you never go back to neutral when you hook up, but it's really important to remember um, that you, if you've only got like 300 metres of braid on your reel and you get 100 metres out, 120 metres out, and um, when that fish hits at that speed, just your reaction, like, it's going off, like, like every second, like, it must be dropping about 20 or 30 metres, right, at that speed. So, um, your 300 metres will go empty really quick if you're not, not fast enough to pull it back. But don't pull it back to neutral, pull it back to about two or three knots. <laughs> and then back to about one, one and a half knots. Just ease it back a little bit, get the rod out of the rod holder, and then ease it back a little bit more when you get a chance. Okay. Um, you'll work that out after you drop a couple of fish I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, areas to fish off the Gold Coast here, like really, um, if this is a seaway, well, this is now west, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> this is jumping pin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's uh, Burley, Tweed, and the Nine Mile Reef just here sort of thing. Cook Island's over here somewhere. Um, but if I was um, going to be go out chasing Wahoo, I'm probably going to go to the nine mile, like really. Um, if you can tee it up and have low tide about six or seven in the morning, which is always a good tide to go through the seaway at five o'clock on the run out, but anyhow. Uh, <laughs> it never used to be a worry. Um, but you want to get down there, fish that last the run out, and first the run in is really good tide on the nine mile reef. Um, if I'm going to do a high tide type of uh, tide in the morning, um, I probably would concentrate on the back side of the diamond reef out here. That's the seaway there, guys. Um, back side of the 24s, on the, across the front here, from sort of the, just past the, um, the fad number one, which is um, not, more or less out from Q1. And then up to about, sort of past the seaway, maybe about 27.52 to about 28.01 south. 
if that makes sense. So you get like a 10 mile uh, or 18, 20 K run uh, to run your, your hard bodies or your skirts. Okay. Um, that's the area I'd be, I'd be working. It's really good current line out there. The water sort of goes from that bit shitty color in close to blue, normally at around that 48, 50 meter line. Uh, and it's, it's always good. So yeah, so around 40, 46 to 52 meters in depth is where you want to sort of zigzag between. When you zigzag, like you hear people say zigzag when you're trawling, it doesn't mean sort of doing this sort of thing up and down. It's more like that sort of thing, if that makes sense. You quite, like uh, on that 10, or if that was, uh, so it's just 10 Ks, imagination that was 10 Ks, your zig's going to be probably around about half a K every time you cross that line, if that makes sense. Like that sort of thing. Why are you uh, Because you work in the depth rather than just stay in a straight line. And for some reason, I get more strikes going across the current than with the current. That's just me. I don't know about you guys, but it works for me. Um, you cover a lot more ground too. Yeah, you cover a lot more ground as well, yeah. Um, but anyhow, um, so just remember that. Don't do it so tight. And when you turn at that speed, at that um, sort of distance, your lines don't get caught up as well. Where if you, if you do sharp ones, it, it's not very good. Okay. Um, the other area I'd look at is definitely um, seaway, so FAD 12, B and C, um, definitely in that area there. Uh, these are on the 36 fathom or 65 metre sort of area, 68 metres. Definitely across the top of that and along the back um, and anywhere from off Burley in about 28 05 at the southern end, south, up to about uh, 27.48 is a good area. So that's about uh, 20, 20, 25k area, and there's lots of reef uh, in patches all the way through this area here, um, all the way down. So there's heaps of uh, zigzagging over that, of course and um, hit the ground, and that's where most of the fish seem to be the last weekend. Okay. So 28.05 to 27.48. How long does it take to get out of the sea over there? Uh, if the weather's like last weekend, only about half an hour, sitting on 25 knots, so. Um, but if it's a bit crappy, uh, yeah, about 35, 40 minutes, if it's sort of you're doing 18 knots. It's about... Um, 20, 22k maybe run. What about the um, direction of the trolling? Yeah, that's a good question too. Um, really weird, the last, um, well, we're at Y last Friday, about 300 metres, and I've never seen such a, or actually pull up the FAD first, FAD uh, 13, on 50 fathoms northeast, we pull, pull up there first, and as I come up to the boy, I'm looking at it, and I, what the hell, the, the the wash has come in the reverse side, if that makes sense. <laughs> it was actually rang into the north and, uh, and, the, and all the, um, the, the spray off was the, the, to the north. Anyhow, so I pulled up and had a drift and um, it was only about, I don't know, five knots of southerly blowing and we we're drifting at like 1.3 knots. So I was pretty impressed for a northerly uphill that current Friday. Yeah. And then um, I went out Saturday morning, not that far, um, but just outside the edge of the 24s, the current had actually was not much in all the was pretty, it was a bit of south. Uh, Sunday we fished in closer again, and it was definitely south. Um, but my mates that went out wide, it was still running north out wide. So um, I don't like fishing in an orderly current, I seem to switch off a bit. And that's why I think the fishing was so hit and miss on the weekend. It was great weather, but you should have fished in closer I think, in that southerly current. Yeah, that's it for old mate that got the wahoo. Well done, mate. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that whole area um, is really, really good. If you want to go and get your probably your biggest wahoo besides the nine mile reef, um, I keep going back to exit, so I've caught so many big ones there. But um, the 50 fathom reef, like 100 meters, 90 meters, is, is renowned for catching like 20 plus kilo wahoo. 
Um, and it's the same scenario, the same lures, the same everything we talked about. Uh, it's just a matter of fishing and zigzagging that 100 metre line. Getting back to what you said about the which way do you trawl? Yeah, so I, I would I would not normally trawl north, um, but in that situation you trawl north more than south. Um, try and trawl obviously with the current, but you get fish against the current too. But because you're going sideways with the current, uh, sort of on an angle, and that's why you get strikes against the current. If you just go straight into it, it's hard work. The lures are working hard. The boats chew and fuel, more fuel, uh, and it doesn't work as good. Okay. So I'll <coughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's only that's only this current at the moment. If, um, my phone's over there. Um, there's a an app. If you haven't got access to like um, some of the current um, apps that are out for current, just go to Bomb. And normally, oh, normally it's that way around. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mate. Yeah. So say last Friday. Um, yeah, you you trawl north. <laughs> That's right. Chances are better of getting fish that way. Yeah. It, like last Friday situation when the current's running north. Yeah, and you still trawl back against it, but you'll go sort of slide on with it. Um, but generally speaking, that's maybe only about twice a year. Have that situation. It happens in close a fair bit, but not out wide so much. That's very unusual. Mm. Um, so when we got out to 300 metres, it was 1.6, 1.7 knots. It was quite hooking. I was very surprised. Um, anyhow, so uh, the Wahoo, yeah, the best time is normally uh, April, May, um, but this year they're early, so I think it's, it may last till that time. I don't know, um, but the next three months is is Wahoo time. Okay. Uh, is there any more questions on Wahoo at all, anyone? Go to yellowfin tuna now. Okay, cool. They um, sit, sorry, oh, sorry. They sit similar to mackerel on the sound. Yeah, they do. They, they lines, they're lines. Like, good question. They sit as in lines, uh, horizontal lines, exactly. Um, they will stack up on bait. Um, but wahoo tend to be not so much like just sitting schooled up, unless there's something floating in the water. Like, if you ever have to hit the hole of grail out there somewhere, something floating with all the fish on it, um, they'll be stacked up and they're feeding on all the little fish as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you get a chance to go up in the reef, of course, um, Barrier Reef, um, we got some big ones up there a few years ago, two years ago, around 30 kilos, and um, we just got those on uh, skirted lures, um, like normal skirts, but bigger skirts, of course. Um, but they just make a mess if you've got good lures. So. You're not intentionally fishing for them, but um, they will take normal skirt lures, and that's how a lot get caught out here. People are just trawling for marlin, and, uh, and they get get them as a bycatch, which is a great bycatch. Okay. But that screaming run is, you know straight away it's a wahoo. It's very fast. But they normally school up in big schools. Yeah, gentlemen, ask a similar question. Um, they do if you've got uh, something there to hold them. Okay. Yeah, whether it be a fab or so whether. Call one just in the middle of nowhere. And um, no, I definitely would, and I definitely leave my other lines out. So um, many times then at nine miles, especially we've had double hookups. I think even triple maybe at times. Can't remember. Um, but um, yeah, so when you hook up and you pull the line back, the, the, this is a stupid part. There's so many mackerel fish too. You pull the um, throttle back and drop back down from 12 to two knots, and you're playing the fish and you, and you start to Real other ones in there, you grab it and start winding a bit faster. Maybe you're doing four knots of speed, and so you'll hook up, but you're not doing 12 knots. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's sort of strange, but it is what it is. It's an advantage, yeah. Okay, um, any other questions, all folks? Okay, so now we're going to go to Yellowfin Tuna. So I just want to know a show of hands um, how many people here um, have chased a bigger yellowfin out wider or, or intend to do that sort of thing? So if you do, yeah, good. So um, th this is the strange part again, and it's a whole, I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of fish around, <laughs> but, uh, but the yellowfin normally out wider traditionally in September, okay? So September, October, and normally we do that, that seminar. I think we did one last year in October um, because there's quite a few caught, um, but they'll still catch them recently out wide, like big, big yellowfin. Um, and I think one of the reasons is so the yellowfin that 
get uh, turned on out, out wide here. This is a big yellow fin. I'm talking like 40 to 80 kilo ones, so they're quite big fish. Um, it is, it, the reasoning is they like uh, an upwelling, they like a, a northerly current, so to speak, and the water gets cooler. Okay, it brings that colder water to the top, and they just love it. They, they flourish in it. So if you ever see that on the chart, and I've getting back to it before, if you go to um, Bomb Weather, I think it's ODC 300Y, I think it's called. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, but you'll, if you just type in that, it'll come up on, on the, um, the uh, bomb. But otherwise, you go to bomb and you find currents. You'll eventually get to find currents in there. Windy has it as well. Windy has a good current one as well. And I'll give you the temp and also what the current's doing as in speed. But when you see those little arrows start to, to whirl like a cyclone in the same way they go uh, clockwise, um, that's when it's yellow pink time out wide. Okay. The one that's out there at the moment, we're just getting the edge of it out wide at the moment, that's why the current's going north. But if you were to go out maybe past mix, which is a fair run about 80 k, 70, 80 k's out, that's where it's cold, colder, and that's where the, um, the fish would be, I dare, dare think. Okay. It's not normally till September, but it's happening now. So that's what I'm saying, there may be all year out wide, I don't know. It's something unusual for us. Um, but in closest time of the year, we get yellowfin as well. We had a customer one the other day, 20. Yeah, it's been some really good ones in yeah. pretty close, like the 18s type of thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And like 20 plus kilo fish, so a good fish. Um, another guy in I spent today hooked one down at Palmy, I think, yeah. um, a few days ago. Good one too, but lost it. But anyhow, um, yeah, so definitely um, last year we got lots of yellowfin, uh, little, little ones, sort of that four to eight kilo size. Anyone caught those in close yet? Yeah, good. Not this year yet, no. They're, they've been around, they've been around uh, for the last month or so, but they're definitely around, starting around now. It's not normally to, again, April, May there. The wahoo and the, and the little yellow fin clothes always run at the same time, okay? Um, so, but they're ready around now. Um, but I get most of mine, I told them hard bodies more than skirts, believe it or not. It's just the way it is. Um, but for wahoo, I prefer to troll skirts over hard bodies. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Ah uh, no, just um, uh, regular, regular deep divers. Still his colour. Yeah, right? just like mackerel size. Yeah, mackerel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. mackerel. Yeah, and actually, um, most of the ones we get, I want to troll for Spanish mackerel. Yeah. So um, and deep divers, they like deep divers. Oh, so then yeah. when you throw in stick baits, they're on the top. Ones, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, good call. Um, I think because I think that when you again, when you're casting those, they're up on the top, right? And when you're cut, using skirts and catching them, they're up on the top. But are they up on the top? I think they're down deep and they come up to your lure, right? Um, but when you're using a deep dive, you're down in their cat in their area, so the little lures don't get down deep enough. They probably come up to it, but I think you got more, more chance of the deep diver it's, it's swimming past their heads. Yeah, well, that's my theory. I don't know, I might be wrong. Are you running wide on straight? Really? No, oh, look, I do sometimes. Um, I don't run a um, wide trace at all with, with the deep divers. Um, I know it's a chance with the Wahoo, and that's just the way it is. And last year, I lost five lures to Wahoo. It wasn't too bad, I don't think. How many Wahoo did you Less than five. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mackerel, though. Um, but, um, yeah, when they're... And like they do obviously school like because one time we done we done three lures in, in out of five rods. Ding, ding, ding. All at one time. So yeah. you change over then when you've lost three lures. Nah. No. Tie more lures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Were you that day we got done too? Mm, I was there one of them. Yeah. We lost a few. I think it was that Mick time. with Mick. Yeah. I, I, mean, I lost three one day, then I took customer the next day and made a mine and we done um similar like three lures again. And then we got two Wahoo but they're definitely, um, they're definitely, when they're on, they, they eat anything. But anyhow, getting back to the yellowfin tuna, um, that size is fine. Let's pass a couple of these around. If you wanted to draw smaller ones, probably a, a 120 is the smallest I go, mate. Uh, 140 is all right as well. Yeah, um, but the 180s, 200s, or 160, yeah. It seems to be the bean size. 
200 is a bit big, um, but that, he wants to get down around 8 to 12 metres. Seems to be the happy depth. Yeah. Still like 10 to 12 knots? Um, yeah, we do get a little bit faster, so around 8 to 10, yeah. where Spanish is sort of 6 to 8. Yeah, so just a, just a little bit next notch up. Yeah. Yeah, and because we're trying to get Wahoo as well, so yeah. Do I run, uh, if I'm intentionally trawling for Wahoo, do I run wire and the hard bodies still don't do it? No. Uh, uh, skirts, 100% wire. Yeah. 100% wire. Um, like all my Wahoo lures, none of them have mono on it. That I do obviously back mail on, but not, um, not for uh, Wahoo. Everything's got a short wire trace, 285 pound. So what's, yeah. your, what's your main go-to? You know, if you're um, saying, well, I, if I need to go, yeah. I mean, does it depend on the conditions? Does it depend on, you know, what sort of bed you got up? Yeah, <laughs> definitely that one. But uh, it um, depends on where I'm going to go. So if we're going to do the nine mile, I'm going to troll skirts only, yeah. and I'm going to troll um, high speed, 12 knots, 13 knots. If I go out the front here, I'm thinking, okay, I want to get Wahoo and Yellowfin. My wife likes Yellowfin tuna, so I'm trying to get both. Um, I'll troll hard bodies and maybe two skirts. Um, and my skirts are out furthest. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll sort of sit in that bit faster, like eight knots or 10 knots. Uh, if I want to get Spanish, I just, drop back a bit and pull in the skirts. It's really funny, you, you, when you're going to go troll for Spanish mackerel, you don't troll skirts because they're going to bite them off. When you go for wahoo, you troll skirts. And I have customers that catch Spanish mackerel on skirts. And not, I think we don't do enough skirt fishing for Absolutely. Spanish mackerel, you know. Um, something to look at, but if you run them on wire, you're not going to lose any. They get bitten up a bit, but if you replace skirts, we replace mm. it here for you. So maybe it's... So maybe we need to change in that category. <laughs> if you're trolling around nine miles, mm. do you run two skirts the same size or do you run a smaller one to see if there's tuna or a bigger one? Yeah, that's a good question too. No, I run them all the same size. Um, I might put the furthest one out a little bit smaller, um, but generally they're all that sort of, the one you got rigged in your bag or maybe the next one. They don't mind at all. don't mind at all. No, they'll eat anything. You know, traditionally, um, a lot of people say, for especially the smaller yellowfin, you want little four-inch skirts and, eight, and six inch skirts, maybe. Um, I don't believe in that. No, just um, put out eight inch or ten inch. They'll, they'll still eat it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't troll anything under that size. Personally, if you're going to chase, like, say we're down at, uh, which I've done before, down at um, Palmy. Or mermaid, and you might then with some yellowfin down there. Maybe palmy they get there quite regularly. The small ones, like two to four kilos or five kilo. Um, you know, I might then use that would be my biggest one. Maybe I might put smaller ones on. Yeah. But down the nine mile, the, the chances they get, obviously going to get wahoo, and um, some of the yellowfin down there at twenty kilos as well. So yeah, I'd up the ante. Getting back to the original talk tonight about fishing big, <laughs> hoping, hoping. Um, so any questions on, on the skirts for the yellow fin at all folks? All the hard bodies? No? Okay, all good. Um, so yeah, probably you need to have both, a bit of both. As Rob said, you need to decide what you're going to do, I guess, Rob. Where are you going to go? Where well, are going to go is the most important factor as to knowing if you're going to do it that way or that way, either or. Um, just going to go out wide for a second, couldn't cover much on out wide, but for the guys going out wide, um, out there, I wouldn't trawl anything under probably the size of the one in your bag, uh, and I'd probably go bigger, if that makes sense. Most of, most of the guys catching um, the elephant out there are uh, using about 10 to 12 yeah. inch skirts, which are fairly big. Um, they will rig them up, and like I wouldn't run wire in front of the lures out there, just run mono, like your normal mile type setup. But you run the lures that will swim at uh, 10 or 12 knots. Like the cup face ones won't do that. They won't work. Okay. But run your, so the secret is just up the revs, drop the lines back further, have your drag set a bit tighter. That's, a, that's Wahoo, that's the other thing, okay? Uh, any questions on that at all, folks? Yes? Are you always running the snap to your lures? Yeah. Uh, if I'm doing a hard body Brody and um, the gentleman covered before with the wind-on leader, yeah, I just snap them straight on. 
quite regularly. Mm. Yeah. Different from Hopper Bay? Like 100%. So loop knot all the time. Yeah. <coughs> Stewie ties a tight knot. I tie tight knot. straight on. Loop knot's breaking the loop. Because <laughs> they flatten. So like, because your lures swim so hard or when you're casting all the time, mm. after say 20 casts, your leader starts to flatten on the point where it's contacting lure all the time and they break in the loop. Can happen. <laughs> happen to you because I've seen it. I know. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah. But it does happen a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But no, it just depends. Like, I definitely would tie a loop knot to a, a split ring anyway, mm. put it that way, because a split ring can cut it. But Oops. to a standard, just a welded loop or something like that is better. Yeah. We're always product testing, and um, my main aim is to know how much gear you guys are going to lose. So someone has to do it. <laughs> yeah, he's a wire. Um, anyhow, it's, uh, it's just up to you guys which way you want to rig up. Yeah, okay. All your pets are pretty well trained out there. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Especially the toothy critter ones. Um, but yeah, so guys, focus on the next three months. Um, do everything that we said. And uh, you, you should be in for it. But... Definitely, um, as I said before, have a spin rod rigged up, whether it be a light one with a small stick bait uh, for in close. Um, like the other day, anyone cast at the spotties that were schooled up the other day? How many guys went out and got those? Are you serious? Okay. No, I got a cast. Yeah. Okay, um, so do you want to know about that as well, guys, while we're here, real quick? So my suggestion to you guys would be um, are the little stick baits in that 60 to uh, 80 mil, yeah. maybe 100 max. Um, and is there one little stick bait here, I think? A little orange one went around before. That's about as big as you want to use. Um, but definitely metals, metals are the go. And we're talking like 25 to 50 gram uh, metals, little, little chrome slices or these little bait fish pro uh, profiles downstairs. Um, and it's really important, people don't understand about how to approach a bait school. The other, on Saturday, actually, I ended up giving up and just drove away. <laughs> I was doing my head in. Down the back there, parking lot. Oh, no, I was in the close grounds, 12 fathoms off SeaWorld here, which is fairly decent size. Um, but when the... Over here somewhere, and we're casting in like that. Um, and then, you know, some of them come up, come from somewhere. <laughs> and just go straight in the middle here. And the old mate would go straight in the middle here, and this guy would just go here, and this guy would cut them off over here, <laughs> or over here where the wind was blowing. It's just mayhem. So we end up going up here somewhere and finding some. But um, just go um, sort of upwind, if that makes sense, and cast back with the wind. Okay? Sometimes I go into the wind too, it just depends. Um, you've got to work that out as well. But always go upwind. It's easier to cast, and, uh, it, and it seems to work a lot better. And have your rods set up again uh, with metals. Another rod. <laughs> Another rod, that's right. Well, the one, the little one you're going to cast a <laughs> stick bait on will be appropriate. <laughs> yeah. No, get another one. Yeah, get another one there. Stuart, you got anything to add to that one, mate? Uh, I think the other thing is like when you're fishing bait schools and stuff like that, the biggest thing is they don't like change in noise, especially tuna and stuff like that. So don't drive up to and turn your motor off. Just leave your motor running, leave yeah, your sound cool. running. Um, they just don't like the change in frequency. It kind of freaks them out and they go away. So, yeah. If you have yeah. three kilowatt transducer, you maybe want to turn it off. No, maybe, yeah. <laughs> turn off well and truly before, before you, you get, get there. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, the other... Pushing the bait up. Yeah. Are you casting in and letting it sink because the mackerel are going to be down a little bit? It's, it's called Russian roulette doing that, but it works really well. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you're... Lures going up to the water, it's going to snip it off. You don't even um, I didn't that. lose any lures the other day that way at all. No, no, which is lucky. Um, but it does, it, it definitely works better. And there was a uh, on Sunday that I went out down to somewhere down to Mermaid, and um, there was guys down there um, that were really good. If you're watching, you guys are good. <laughs> I was watching the two young guys in little tinny, everyone else had big boats, he's had a little tiny tinny, a little two, two stroke. 20 in the back, I think. And, um, and they were just vertical fishing. So they would go, they'd find the mackerel on the sounder, they'd see the bait, they'd go upwind of it, um, and they'd drift back with it. Um, and they'd just 
popped the lure a little bit and they were fishing like a um, sort of micro jig style uh, and let the lure hit the bottom and then they just wind fast and pause and wind fast and pause and bring up through the through that. And they are double cut all the time. They, I think they bagged out real quick. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So that's another way of doing it. It's 20 slugs that way. Yeah, that's right, on the fall. <laughs> on the fall. <laughs> so I'm getting that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, um, the other thing too is when you see the, um, the boat, that school erupt, and, and unless you want to catch a little tuna, like a little um, bonito or a little mac tuna, if they're jumping out of the water, they're, they're tuna, okay? If they're zipping, like zipping, just splashing, zipping like that, they're spotties. So that's the two differences. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if we come up and we see it in the distance, we zoom over there, and then we see these little things jumping. We look for the next school. <laughs> Where's the next one? <laughs> the other day, that uh, when we come back, we come back early on Sunday morning, at about so we left in about just after seven. We'll be home at eight. And yeah, um, I think from the Mermaid Reef to about uh, 12 fathoms off SeaWorld. Um, we could have stopped at 20 uh, schools. Some had both fish in it, some had spotties in it. Um, and then my mates that were down, that were down at the Mermaid, because they went a bit quiet, they glassed out a bit there at one stage. Um, they come on about 8.30. Is anyone down at Mermaid on Sunday? Here? Wow, that's amazing. Um, anyhow. Um, the fish come to the top and they stayed on the top for about an hour. Everyone bagged out casting medals, casting stick baits. Well, you watched it from the beach. <laughs> you yeah, watched it from the beach, Rob. <laughs> yeah. But, we got pippies. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but guys, if you see that situation out wider, um, they are going to be yellowfin. Or you don't get many little uh, leaping bonito out past 50 metres. So they're going to be yellowfin or wahoo. Yeah. They get eaten out there, they? Yeah, they get eaten out there, that's right. <laughs> too, too scared to go that far. Uh, it's over the edge. Um, but yeah, so in that situation, have something decent to cast. A bit bigger, up the ante a bit, okay? Any questions at all? No? Okay. How lighting do you can you get away with it? Uh, the other day I lost a few lures, uh, fish-wise. Not, not spinning, but um, trawling. Uh, I was doing trawling 30-pound braid, and I lost four rigs. So I was too light. But I was just trying to do light, light, something different, a bit of fun. Yep. Don't have spotties. Um, but I lost four rigs, <laughs> so it didn't work too good. Um, we're using, I just will let you guys in a bit of a secret. We've been making them up today. Um, that's actually that one there caught a lot of fish the other day because I've only got two hooks left on it now. Um, but that one, that, I don't know if you've ever seen this thing, I'll pass it around to you. Um, this one here is uh, the hook that was locked in on this one. <coughs> Um, but it's a rig that we use and the hook, so you put it on pilly, right? And this hook here goes through the mouth of the pilly. So we're going to do one on, on the uh, internet this weekend. But if that's the pilly like that, that's his head. Um, you measure it out. So the last hook that hooks into the front of this, that hook, goes just in here, if that makes sense. So it's very easy to rig up. So before you do that one, obviously you work out where the third hook's gonna go, it might be around here. So you just push up in the belly, and then your second hook, and then your last hook's in here. And then this little contraption has a, a little key lock inside, and the eye of the hook, the round part of the hook, locks into that key lock. So when you pull the wire up, it locks in there. So this doesn't spin around, it just stays straight and actually w works really well. Then because of the way the front's like a bib, it actually dives down and, and swims like a bib on a lure. And that's what, we had um, pink skirts, like the normal little wire jobs out. Um, with everything was on this, and we had triple hookups on them. Like, we're not switching all to these, and then on my light rod lost so many, we had none left, except the one that was on my rod. Um, but we still got a lot of fish, but yeah, that's, so that's the go. It's just something different. And this skirt that locks up in the key lock, the bibs on it, like that sort of thing. And the skirt sort of sits beside the fish like that. Yeah. And uh, it just works really well. But anyhow, I'll pass that around. Ignore it's a little bit bent up. Um, 
this bigger size too, which I haven't tried yet for Spanish because it couldn't fish for Spanish last week. So, yeah. So the Spanish mackerel season is open now, guys. Um, I checked the weather. I don't know if you guys have been watching the weather, but it's meant it was meant to be really crappy this weekend. Now it's looking really good against this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Tuesday's like three knots all day. Yeah, so. Sorry, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm supposed to be heading up the Barrier Reef to Swains on Monday night. So, but there's a Just there's a low, yeah, there's a low coming. So um, by Thursday, Friday, it's sort of off rocky where we're going to be, and it's supposed to be blowing 70 knots. So I don't know what's So my wife's got insurance; she's happy. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my other mates asked for my GPS mark, so he's happy. <laughs> So guys, anyhow, um, but get out there this weekend. I think Saturday's going to be a bit crappy, but Sunday definitely looks really good. Okay. Um, I'll be definitely focusing on Spanish mackerel. There's a lot of Spanish mackerel. I know we talk wahoo That's and yellowfin, right. but you've got to go to Spanish mackerel. Yeah, there's too many out there. So a few guys that fish uh, the other day, uh, guys snapper fish are getting bitten off. Um, guys that were just doing any fish are getting bitten off out there on the diamond. So um, I dare say they'll be at Mermaid and Palmy as well. Gravel patch would be worth a go. Um, the tide this weekend though is really good for um, the nine mile reef if you want to have a crack on the Wahoo. It's that low tide six or seven in the morning. Do you do the same in the afternoon? So say yeah, I've done some good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, my brother Paul and I actually used to do a lot of popper casting there in the afternoon years ago when he had his charter boat. But um, I would probably. Um, Give it a crack if that's the time that suits your availability to go fishing. If you've got that low tide, four or five in the afternoon, definitely. Um, high tide, I, like I haven't done really fantastic fishing on the nine mile on the high tide as I have on the low tide. Yeah, so concentrate on the low tide. The trouble is just the swell. There's a bit of swell on at the moment, so just be careful of swell on the weekend. Um, for those, did anyone see the shot on the seaway from the air, how it looked when that swell was up last week. Mm -hmm. It's like totally closed off now from the south wall to Dead Man's. So there's a bit of swell, just be really careful. Okay. It actually showed the channel going like, no, uh, about, yeah, about off um, Baby Harbour before you could actually go around mm -hmm. Dead Man's sort of thing. <laughs> Which is really weird because you get waves obviously coming across Dead Man's, so it'd be very dangerous. So hopefully they dredge will do something please, <laughs> um, because we don't want someone to get hurt. There's already been a few boats going over this year, so, which is unusual. Do these come yes. with the skirt or you stuff the skirt on? No, they come with it, yep. They work out uh, with the discount, it's a bit over 20 bucks for the rig. Yeah. And we put um, those hooks there, I just whacked in to test them the other day, um, but we put um, Sharper, they're very sharp. Stu's been rigging all day, he's got holes in his right. hands. They're sharp, <laughs> very sharp. Sorry, Stu. <laughs> uh, they're very sharp, yeah. So they're just, because you're mainly using that on spotties. Well, I have caught Spanish on it too, the other day we caught a Spanish yeah. on one, testing it. Um, that was before the closure. Um, and uh, those hooks are only four rows, but they seem to hold, hold out all right the other day. That was 10 kilo, 12 kilo Spanish. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Slimy on Oh, we use the slimy on that. Yeah. But I was using fillies on the spotties the other day. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, someone, yeah. Do you chase the wahoo all day or do you give up? Yeah, no, that's a good call too. Um, like, if you got a low tide, if it was in the middle of the day, I'd definitely give it a crack. Say it went out in the high tide. Uh, I, just, I just like low tide for a wahoo on the nine mile. Out here, um, if you're trawling for marlin, wherever it might be, um, the chances are you'll catch them any time of day like you do with marlin, you know. There will be a bite time though, the bite time is always two hours after high. Yeah, so give that a go. Did anyone notice on the weekend the fishing bite time was better in the morning than the afternoon? Anyone fish all day? <coughs> it would have been. Both and yeah. It's because high tide was seven or eight in the morning and bite time would have been around nine, ten o'clock. Um, it would have got a daylight bite as well, so um, the best bite time this week was actually on Monday, Tuesday. Stuart had it off, but it was blowing about 30 knots. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. Yeah. Um, bad weather, but um, yeah, so you can get that that 
um, last quarter's a really good moon, or first quarter tide on the moon phase. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions at all? Anything you want to know? About anything else? Dave, how you going, mate? Okay, really good. I didn't talk, cover that because it's one of the good spots. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, you let the cat out of the bag, Dave. Okay, how many guys here fish up Point Lookout Way? Okay, you do. The Sevens Reef, like it's like the Nine Mile Reef. It's the Holy Grail of Wahoo when they're on. Uh, and Spanish mackerel, by the way. So Sevens Reef, um, I've got a lot of yelp in there too. Uh, cast stick baits and poppers there. Actually, Paul was out doing it uh, two days ago up there. I don't know how it went though. Uh, but um, it, yeah, it's a really good spot, mate. And it's very similar size. It's quite decent size. So you can actually cover a bit of ground on it. Um, it's similar depth to, I think it's around 30 metres, is it? 40 metres? Somewhere in there? Yeah, it, yeah. it comes up. Yeah, it comes up, yeah. So, um, so guys, it's situated where the, where the, the group is, or the, the rocks, flat rock, boat rock, off Point Lookout, it's slightly northeast of there, not very far out from them, um, and it's just uh, just a hell reef and big wahoo. What's it called? Sevens Reef. Sevens, Sevens Reef. Yeah. A lot of scuba divers, spiros, yeah, yeah. Same with the Nine Mile too. You just dodge them. Oh, yeah, they're a great bite. <laughs> <laughs> if you go up in the sea, like roughly how many k's? Up to there, seventy. A long way, uh, nine miles, about 38, I think, 37. So it's closer. Yeah. I went in a tweed, Yeah, a tweed, a few k's. <laughs> Five k's. Six k's. Actually, you know the um, the other spot, that, is it the 10 minute reef down there? Yeah. Yeah, there's a few who get around that as well. Eh? Yeah, do, yeah, definitely. There's been some big who caught there over the years too. And obviously Spanish mackerel on that. Yeah. Do you, and then, do you work at mud hole at all? No, not the mud hole so much. No, definitely not, except for bottom fishing or bait. Um, but definitely, if you've got the chance to get down to Windara, Windara is like Wahoo City. Yeah. Oh, you get down there? No way. <laughs> You're joking me. Serious. Oh, because of the closure out here, that's why. Yeah, okay. Oh, serious? Okay. Oh, well. Uh, that's not normal. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I got most of my. Oh, how'd they go? Oh, yeah. And there was um, pros selling slimies as well, live slimies. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Maybe it's allowed in New South Wales, but not allowed here, unfortunately. Oh, right. I mean, but we, we can't sell live fish here. We're not allowed to do it. Yeah. I've tried, tried that license many times. Apparently, they've been tanked up in America now to sell them. Oh, how good is that? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. ten, 10 bucks a scoop or 10 bucks or something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm really worth the drive down there if you get to stay alive and lie back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, there must be a lot of slimies down there at the moment. But, um, but yeah, anyhow, so yeah, Sevens Reef, Dave, really good spot, mate. So if you're going through South Passage, you know, at the end of the day, it's, I know it's, if you're going from, say, Jacob's Well if you across the Pin Bar, it's probably going to be about a 40k run. Um, if you go from Manly or, or Victoria Point, whatever, it's going to be probably 50k run. About 50k though from oh, Manly. Less than, that. less than that. Not much less though, I think. Uh, but or 70k from here up, you know. So it's a, that's why it's such a good spot. It's a bit like um, years ago we used to get a lot of who uh, up at Hen is it Henderson's? I think one that's halfway up Morton's. Yeah, I think it's a green zone now. Henderson's here. Yeah, geez, that was good for Wahoo. Yeah. Years ago. Jared's Cave, I don't know this place. Whereabouts is that at? Just north of Oh, there you go. Might be, we might have done that one too. <laughs> yeah, that was such a good spot. But that's all green zone now, right? Yeah. So you with the uh, patrol in Lewis, how soon, uh, how light does it have to be to patrol Lewis? I mean, you're heading out uh, early in the morning and you're... Oh, daylight. Yeah, so that's a good call. Um, look, you know, we've trolled hard bodies, uh, not so much for Wahoo, but for Spanish, definitely in the dark and catch them in the dark, 100%. You, like, just the sun hasn't broke the, even the horizon yet yeah. before it comes up above the horizon. So, yeah, definitely give it a crack, yeah. But personally, I like to troll baits first up in the morning, yeah. 
So then I'll switch to those. Yeah. Okay, um, that's about it, guys. Okay. Everyone's. Sorry, yeah, yeah, go for it, my I'm friend. Go for it. I love answering questions. Well, Stuart could answer them too. Same next couple of weeks. Yes. Yes. And you have got fish, I haven't got fish. Yes. If you're going to pull up a cube for the smaller tuna. Yes. Roughly what sort of depth would you. You know, if you're going to chase the elephant. So, oh, no, I definitely try around 30 metres. Like a good spot for um, cube for the elephant. I've, I've caught in so many over years at the, like the diamond reef area, about 38 to 43 metres. Um, and I'll anchor up and I'll have, uh, I'll be, I might have locked my boat's like a crazy thing. So I've got pillies out, I'm spinning my belly trail, and I'm cubing constantly cutting up as well. Uh, using pillies, and um, you'll see the little yellow fin when you throw the bill out. They, they're sitting at high, I don't know if they're higher than your boat or whatever, but they come ripping out for the back of the boat. You see them ripping out, and they take the cubes, you know, and yet they did not just take your line, of course. Um, use a, a little tiny strong 2 0. We just got these new hooks downstairs there. Matt Suring, is yeah. it? Matt Suring, and, and there's a live bait one too. Uh, I don't know what brand. Uh, was it Wizard? Yeah. yeah, wizard brand, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, these things are strong, sharp, and you can hide them in the pilchard, but they'll catch a 20 kilo fish without bending, you know? So you need something like that. Use 30 pound fluorocarbon, uh, as low as you can. And um, if you want to have a crack at getting mackerel, Spanish mackerel or wahoo, whilst you're doing that, uh, my suggestion would be to use little tiny gangs, like two O's or one O's, but a strong O'Shaughnessy type hook. Um, and use a even though the pili might be big, um, you, I'd cut maybe a quarter of the pili off at the back. Uh, it just doesn't spin, it works better, it smells, whatever. Um, and put your little gang on it. And you'll still catch a big fish on a little gang and you get less chance of getting bitten off. Yeah, that works. Right. Whilst you're cubing yeah. for the yellow fish. So, uh, so yeah, getting back to the 30 metre line. Um, 30 metres off... Um, we call it Focus Reef, it's about 32 metres. A lot of spotties there on the weekend actually. I think BKs and the other boats smashed it there. Um, you get yellow in there with that as well, but 40 metres, 43 metres, the diamond's probably where I'd start at, yeah, to be honest with you. And they'll be around the next two or three months there. Yep. Yep. So, but you need to anchor to do that. And dice up heaps of pillies about the size of you know, so your thumbnail forward, that, does that split little cube? Yep. That's a go. Yep. No sinker and sinker. You need to have one there, one there, one down there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Three, at least three cubes out on, on your rigs. Yep. Any other questions at all? No, spanner crabs are on too, just let you know that as well. Yeah, spanner crab. Lots. <laughs> and big. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, Stu, anything you want to add to it, mate? No, I think that's about it, Dougie. Yeah. Pretty much covered okay. it, yep. Yep. So, the, like, we did that, we did the heavier yellowfin one in October at Deep Wide, so we're not covering much tonight, sorry, guys, but um, you can jump back. I think we've got that on the YouTube, you can have a look at it. Um, but, yeah, okay, we'll um, get into the draw. And good luck this weekend. Mate, do you want to, you're all good? You're good? Cool. No worries at all. Okay. The draw, Stewie. So first prize I think is around four hundred and nearly five hundred four and something dollars. A lot of lures. I know for everyone's here, but number twenty nine. Oh. Nah. Nah, redraw. <laughs> <laughs> Stewie. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. We'll just go through the numbers. Street number draws front row. Number 15. Oh, middle. Okay. Well done, mate. Okay. Well done, buddy. Good to pass that to you, Second prize, I think it's still a 300 or something. Thanks, Stu. I don't like that number. It's 36. <laughs> <laughs> so that's true. Oh, number two. Well done. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Next one, I think, still over 200 bucks on our street. It's about $1,400 worth of gear tonight, guys. Number 26. Oh, you're doing back. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, man. Cheers. Well done, young fella. Okay, next one, fourth, I think, still around 200 bucks. Number 18, must be in the middle there somewhere. Well done. <laughs> Just well done, buddy. Cheers, mate. Okay, um... Yes. Okay. Number 20. Well done. Thank you, my friend. I'll get you to sit there more often if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, all down the back again, number 24. Nice. <laughs> it's always good when a neighbour wins so he gives back to you. <laughs> well done. Okay. Um, it's the last one. Stewie. Number 28. I think that's that, that's redraw. So guys, thanks for coming along tonight. Um, the weather's a bit more reasonable than what it has been, so enjoy it, get into it. Um, just, if you're fishing out wide, just make sure there's no northerly current, that's what I'd suggest. Okay. Number 24. Oh, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Good on you, mate, you guys cleaned up. Well done, buddy. Okay, guys, thanks for coming along. Um, we're gonna be downstairs in about an hour, and uh, any questions, you're welcome just to text us, email us, whatever, and we'll help you out, okay? And uh, we'll catch you next time. I'll just let you know the next seminar too. Um, left field, it's, everything's happening early as it has been in all the fishing categories. So Stewie's favorite, we're doing uh, crustacean, so it's different, okay? So we're doing uh, spanner crabbing, sand crab, mud crab, and prawns. Okay, something different. And then the one after that, just to let you know, because uh, that'll be um, around the third week of March. Uh, when Stu, you, this is when you get back, I think it is. Yep. And then uh, Stu's got Barramundi fishing for a, about a week after I get back from the reef. And then um, we're going to be the next one, depending on what's happening. But as you know, the staff are on pretty early this year too. So we may be doing the staff for a while and bring it from May to April. Okay. I'll let you know. Thank you.